Well, hello, and goodbye. It's time for the end of the world. If you think you've seen pollution, just wait. One day, we could suffocate in a killer smog never before witnessed here on Earth. There, may, there are some pretty nasty clues that the cleanup system of the atmosphere is on the verge of collapsing. And when that happens, better go build yourself a glass dome to live under. It's an eco-disaster at its very worst. A cruel apocalypse that could kill billions of people and change the face of the Earth forever. One day, everything seems quite fine, but then all hell breaks loose. Suddenly, the pollution from our factories and cars just won't go away anymore. It's as if the cleaning fir firm of the planet has decided to quit. Polluting chemicals don't rain down anymore and seem to refuse to dissolve into the oceans. They just kind of hang around, forming dense, thick mists of dirt. And of course, we're having our share of smog already, but it doesn't compare to the mother of all smogs that is being unleashed now. The consequences are dramatic. Within years, huge parts of the atmosphere become foul reeking, toxic brew of exhaust gases, soot, and factory filth. Asthma and lung diseases become the world's biggest killers, and smog one of its worst problems. Big cities like Tokyo, Athens, and New York are permanently covered in dense death fogs. Wearing a mouth cap or a gas mask outdoors becomes common, as wearing shoes. But still, people die in the millions. And it goes far beyond that. The wind pushes the toxic clouds around from one place to another, bringing death and destruction to the countryside as well. Animals become sickly, crops turn brown and wither, forests die on a vast scale, and huge forest fires consume the remains. The weather forecast will highlight what pollution will the weather forecast will highlight what pollution goes where, instead of silly nonsense like whether we're going to have rain or sunshine tomorrow. In the meantime, hundreds of millions of Echo refugees will try to escape, causing uproars, wars, famines. In the rich countries, people will build huge sky domes over their cities with purified air in it. But the poorer countries, the smog disaster strikes all that harder. It's called the hydroxyl apocalypse. What you're witnessing is a phenomenon known among scientists as the hydroxyl collapse or more technically, the breakdown of the oxidizing capacity of the atmosphere. Don't worry if that doesn't ring a bell. It's a rather obscure thing. Scientists worry about the ozone layer, greenhouse gases, and stuff like CFCs and CFKs, but not hydroxyl. That's partly because hydroxyl is a benign little substance. You'd call it the detergent of the atmosphere. The formula, OH negative, attacks smoke from our factories, cars and chimneys and makes it soluble in water and hydroxyl's touch pollution can rain down and varnish vanish right into the soil or dissolve into the oceans but no hydroxyl and we're in trouble evil noxious gases like sulfuric and nitro nitrogen oxides will pile up no hydroxyl and smoke and soot will accumulate right in the atmosphere and no hydroxyl is where we're heading in the 1980s, NASA scientists came up with figures that su suggested the amount of hydroxyl in the air has dropped 25% since 1950. And in 2001, the UN's Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Control, IPCC, predicted a 20% drop of hydroxyl activity in the century to come. Then, in 1993, Sasha Madronich, a research a researcher working for the U.S. government made a frightening discovery. At some point, Mad Radonich calculated pollution will overwhelm the hydroxyl chemistry. There will be so much filth around that the surgeon will simply give up, quit. In fact, over some polluted areas, the hydroxyl shutdown is already happening. Okay, so we just cut down on the pollution, right? Unfortunately, that won't help. The calculations show that once the hydroxyl collapse has kicked in, there is no turning back. A, a, a chain reaction will set in, emptying the atmosphere of hydroxyl. Shutting down a few factories won't bring the cleanup system back on. And there's a weird twist, too. Hydroxyl is formed under the influence of ultraviolet radiation from the sun, the sort of radiation that causes skin cancer. So it may actually be a bad thing that the hole in the ozone layer is currently closing up again. The ozone layer protects us from ultraviolet radiation, but it also puts a hydro 
puts a brake on hydroxyl formation. Now that's a funny paradox. You may end up sitting under a glass bell, thanks to the fact the ozone layer is in tip-top condition again. Oh, these climate issues. Why are they always so terribly complicated? So what is this hydroxyl stuff anyway? Hydroxyl, or OH negative, is a fleeting, highly reactive substance, substance that pops in and out of existence everywhere around us. Although a hydroxyl radical is around for only a second at the most because it reacts so readily with other compounds. Hydroxyl shows up when, you're, when, you, bump, when you bombard water vapor with ultraviolet radiation. There's only a tiny fraction of hydroxyl in the air. Scoop up a chunk of air as big as Mount Everest and you'll find hardly enough hydroxyl to fill a bucket. Still, it is effective stuff. It oxidizes gases like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxides, sulfuric dioxide, and methane. This means that the gases get prepared so that they can chemically bind to water, and they can rain down and end up, end up in our so soil or the ocean. Unfortunately, it's running out. Thirteen miles above the Earth, the sun's light strikes water vapor, releasing hydrogen and oxygen from their molecular bond. Thus begins a miraculous process that has been at work since Earth began, nature's own air purification system. The hydrogen and oxygen are now free to form new alliances, but it is the pairing of a single hydrogen atom and a single oxygen atom which forms a hydroxyl radical that is nature's silver bullet. This new unstable molecule seeks equilibrium by stealing atoms from neighboring molecules, thereby destroying them in the process. In the great plan, the victim is methane, nature's own pollution. But the hydroxyl is equally able to destroy man-made pollutants in the atmosphere. Benzene, nitrous oxide, vinyl chloride, and more. By stealing atoms from these pollutants, the hydroxyl radicals rearrange their chemical structures to form harmless molecules. Water, carbon dioxide, simple oxygen and hydrogen, which, in turn, begin forming new hydroxyls to keep nature's air cleaning system running continuously.